Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now, this is a point where we afford you the opportunity to be a part of today's conversation. Yesterday, Senate President Bukala Saki, after having served as governor of Kwara State, announced his intention to run for elections in 2019. We'll be looking into the details of the story, talking about the things that we need to look out for when deciding who to cast our vote for in 2019. Also, we'll be looking at the challenges that surround getting your PVCs. Today is the deadline. Lots of centers are crowded. But let's start off with the story of Saraki and the not too young to run. President of the Nigerian Senate, Bukola Saraki, on Thursday declared to run for the office of the President of Nigeria. This came about 24 hours after his Senate colleague, Rabiu Kwankwaso, also declared to run for the same office at an elaborate rally in downtown Abuja. Now, Saraki and Kwankwaso are among about a dozen presidential aspirants of the main opposition party, PDP. Mr. Saraki made his declaration at a public dialogue organized by the Not Too Young to Run movement, a youth-based group that successfully lobbied for the passage of a new law that reduced the age of qualification for political office across the country. The event was themed Youth Candidacy and the Future of Nigeria Beyond 2019. Now, Mr. Saraki said, you know, that he was answering the call of the Nigerian youth asking him to run for office. A lot of people have asked which number did the Nigerian youth use to call him and ask him to run for office. They've been at loggerheads, the Not Young to Run campaign mm. officials, as well as President Bukola Saraki. Before we even get into that, once our phone lines are open, if you're one of the youths that have called on Bukola Saraki and asked him to run for presidency, do call in and let us know, because quite frankly, the Not Too Young to Run campaign had an event going on yesterday. Yes, they invited a number of PDP lawmakers, etc., chairmen, etc., now, what we're looking at is a situation where Saraki is delivering a keynote speech and decides to use that as an opportunity to come out and mention his run so for presidency. We also saw the Not Too Young to Run campaign coming out this morning with a statement. And in that statement, they expressed, quote unquote, that they are disappointed that Dr. Bukola Saraki would use their, their platform and their events to announce his bid for presidency. And they've also come out, to, he's come out to respond to that as well, to say that his intention was not to put them in any bad light, but he made, he made his declaration known in utmost good faith. Chukudi, what is your take on this back and forth? I feel bad for the organizers of the event because they had um, something else in mind. But then again, when I critically assess the situation, I cannot help but wonder um, how you would let your guards down knowing well that when it comes to politics, people try to take advantage in order to score political points. Like you mentioned, you invited top or big wigs of the People's Democratic Party. I saw the chairperson of the PDP, he spoke mm. to, the, um, to the gathering. I saw the deputy Senate President, Ike Kweremadu, he spoke to the gathering. The Senate President, Dr. Bukhara Saraki, was in attendance. There was an understanding for him to also speak to the gathering. Did you tell him that, okay, this is the idea for this gathering, and even if you're going to say anything, this is where we would want you to just keep your focus of the conversation. So you cannot blame him. I read this speech. It was an elaborate speech that was well prepared, touched on so many problems that we are faced with in Nigeria today that all political gladiators say we need to deal with. And he now, you know, he now launched the killer blow. This is medicine after death. I really think that if you form a platform and you feel that you want to use this platform to correct a lot of ills in the society, there is a way that you balance your association with, you know, certain members of the political class. I know people who would not take pictures with members of the political class because they are guarding not their integrity, but the job that, um, you know, they set out to do. For example, if you are a broadcast journalist per se, and you are supposed, on your platform, you can have people from different political affiliations come so that you grieve them critically in the interest of the people. You know, I know people who, as a matter of principle, would not want to pose with them and be striking, uh, so taking, taking like selfie pictures. So there. it doesn't look like, okay, at hold... the end of the day, after this frank conversation, we'll just go and sit down by a bottle of Chukuri, beer hold on, and, and discuss. We have a call from Abuja. Okoroko is calling from Abuja. Let's hear from him. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for calling. Hello. Okay, um, we don't seem to have that. Please, when you call, remember to turn down the volume of your TV screen so that we can have a conversation with you. We have a few more minutes before we wrap up this segment. Of course, we have Johnny Drew coming up after the break, but we have a few more minutes. Remember to turn down the volume of your TV screens. Chukudi, we're talking about journalists refusing to take pictures. As a matter people. of principle, so it doesn't look like you're hobnobbing with them. I really think that politicians do all that they can 
to place themselves in advantageous positions. Hold that thought a second. I think we still have a Coraco on the line. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to Hello Nigeria. Thanks for calling in. Go ahead. Okay. So I'm talking about the issue of uh, Dr. Bogmas, like who, who did play his intention yesterday to run for the office of the presidency. Mm. So I, I'm convinced that he's a man with a political progressivism. Yes, what he said. Hello. Well, Hi. Listening. Uh, good afternoon. Okay, go ahead. We can hear you. Okay, so I'm talking about uh, Dr. Bukala Sraki, the Senate of the, the President of the Senate. I want to throw a little light based on his uh, declaration yesterday. Okay, go ahead. So I, I'm, I'm convinced that he's a man with uh, political progressivism. He has all it takes to move his country forward from this. Uh, Actually, this, uh, the plan is not to endorse or to, dis, you know, to. Can you hear me now? Yes, Okoro. Okay, okay. The plan is not, the, the conversation is not centered around endorsing or discrediting him. We're just asking what you think about the fact that he announced, you know, his bid to run on a platform where he was invited to be a keynote speaker. That aside, we're looking at what are the necessary things we need, the necessary qualities we need to look out for before we cast our vote for anybody. Not in reference to Bukola Saraki or anybody else. Yeah. All right. So thank you very much. We have Afolabi standing by. Hello, Afolabi. Good afternoon. Oh, sorry. We lost Afolabi. So for those who are going to call, we have a few more minutes. The concept is, what are the things we should look out for? Everybody's saying, get your PVCs, get your PVCs. Leila and I went to get our PVCs the other day. You know, we have, we've been pushing this message. Yeah. But it's not enough for you to get your PVC and then you decide to vote for anybody, just anybody, because someone is, because of religious or political aff um, affiliations. What are the qualities we need to look out for before we decide to vote for someone? I think that is what, you know, that should be the focus of our conversation. Because if we say that we want a country that is, you know, that we would rise beyond ethnic sentiment, um, religion practice, political affiliation, then we should be looking out for qualities that we can authenticate or verify that certain persons are imbued with who have indicated their interest. Because some people will say, I want to answer the call of... The people who might be calling you, might be giving you a missed call. If you, first, if you are not passionate to serve and you do not see it as, you know, a, a, as a duty to serve the fatherland in the interest of the citizenry, then you have no business in the first place. God called me. I want to answer the call of my people. First red flag. Now, what we must do is begin to look out for people who, from whatever position that they have occupied, or whatever action in the past that they have carried out, or they are currently carrying out, have shown exemplary leadership. You do not go to the university to learn how to become the best president. In fact, I think that it is the easiest job going by the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the powers that the president of this country is, you know, endowed with, you have the opportunity of choosing the best. And if you look at Nigeria and say God has blessed us with very intelligent people who are ingenious and creative, then you should be picking from the best of the creation in the world and get people who set targets, have the political will to go out and deal with issues and solve these our problems. Yeah. If Nigerians can live outside the shores of this country, and you know, they conform to all the laws and they excel in these societies, then why can we not replicate this in our great country, Nigeria? It is because people just want to perpetuate themselves in power and reach themselves at the expense of the citizen. One minute, because we have Ademola calling in from Lagos. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for calling in. So, hello, Nigeria. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, 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 to, I'm about to talk about the... Uh, Ademola, the first of all, please turn down the volume of your TV screen because we can hear ourselves. Thank you. All right. Please, when you're calling again, turn down the volume of your TV set, else we might have to disconnect the call. It affects the communication. Okay. Now, let's be on the lookout for qualities and see how these people will passionately change our country or transform Nigeria. Is it by what they say, Chukudi? Because no, 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 no. Is cheap. no, 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 no. Talk is cheap when it is empty. That's, that's when talk is cheap now. Talk is cheap when it is empty. If I say... I am going to build castles in the sky to deal with the problems of the housing deficit in Nigeria. Then that's just empty talk. You must show your work in for that mass politics. Show us how you are going to practically provide solutions to the problems that we are facing. Okay, for example, be, sorry, okay, go on and I'll ask them. For example, if we are dealing with the problem of insecurity in Nigeria, you narrow your focus to 
Nigeria's security apparatus and apparent chick. What exactly is wrong? You start from leadership, you identify the problems, and you come to the core where you can start providing solutions. We have people who complain that they don't get their dues, they don't get their welfare. Soldiers in, in recently, they protested when they were going to be reassigned. In Boronu State, mobile police officers protested. When you begin to get all these fillers, you know something is wrong. Right. Just do the needful. So hold that thought. We have Dr. Charles from Lagos. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for calling. Good, good, good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for calling, sir. Yeah, OK. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about the, the declaration of uh, Bukis Saraki. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, to, start, to start with, I'm, I'm so disappointed in the organizers of the Not Young to run. But they quickly... We, I am a card carry member of the All Progressive Congress and a governorship candidate aspirant of the party in Delta State. Dr. Charles, please? Yes, please. quickly, uh, it's important that we put this out there that the organizers of the event have come out to say that there was no arrangement with Dr. Bukola Saraki and he took advantage uh, of Eugene, the situation. Eugene, 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 listen to me. Eugene, hear me out. Now, if it was a platform for sincerity and objectivity, you won't bring E.K. Ekwemadu to that platform. Tell me that Jabia Mila is the leader of the APC in the House of the Why was he not on that platform? If not to young whatsoever, they should be critical in their and sincere in their presentations to the public. You don't you don't give us half truth and half big cleverness. It amounts to gross stupidity at the end of the day. Buki Saraki was in the APC, jumped ship to the PDP, was to run for presidency, and you provided a platform to him for him to market himself and sell his ambition. Why did he not go the line of pop and so by going to Eagle Square to declare? Or to any other place, at least in his quarter state where he's the governor general. Enough of this stupidity that they are toiling and playing around with. Nigerians are not as daft as they want us to believe. I am a young man. All right. I am a proponent of the North Young to, to wrong view. We were those who converted it far better than those people who are taking the glory and using it as an opportunity to make money. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Charles, for calling and sharing your thoughts. And wish you all the best in your running towards becoming governor of Delta State. Delta State is my state, by the way. So, yes, we, we, we will get to know. We will get, you know, take it further now, from there. But he's raised a very... Yes, beyond APC-PDP narrative or argument, you would recall that in my analysis, I said you are organizing a platform for aspirants and young people, and you invited the chairman of the PDP, the deputy Senate president, the Senate president, and what else did you expect? Quite partisan. I saw the video and how people cheered. It looked like something that was organized. I mean, somebody still has to convince me that we didn't get to that. Because if you have an agenda, and your agenda says, this is the time allotted for you to do this, and this is where the focus should be. You will be able to control and curtail the situation. Okay, Chukudi, the last question. Let's just take this one very, very quickly before we round up. What are the three things that every Nigerian citizen needs to look out for when heading to the polls to place their finger and put in a tick for someone that's running for president? First and foremost, we need people who are going to ensure that the labors of our heroes past will not be in vain. One. Number two, people who are passionate to serve. With her Number three, likes. people who are credible. Even if the person was the secretary of Landlord Tenant Association, if the person is credible and that the person can convince us that looking at the issues of Nigeria, if you give me the opportunity, I would serve, then those are the qualities that we should be looking out for. Brilliant. Brilliant. Chukudi, thank you so much for this extensive thank insight. You. It's been absolutely amazing. To enjoy more of this, our will get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.